Hello friends, James Stevenson back with part four in my forecast video review series for Q3 of 2024. What do we expect for Tesla earnings? I'm going to show you on some charts that Loki and I put together. Loki is hiding behind his bun bun. Maybe I'll move his bun bun here a little bit so you can see Loki's face. There he is. A little bit better while I show you my desktop, which has these charts. Uh, here's one Loki helped me make. It's Tesla's next 12 months non-gap EPS unadjusted. So I confuse everybody every time I show them this chart because <laughs> it's next 12 months, not trailing 12 months, which is normally what you see. We're talking about a forecast for EPS, right? So we're talking about the next four quarters. So uh, here's one. Uh, well, this is an actual. Actually, I'm going to have to go reduce the size of this uh, circle to make it the same size as this circle because $4.05 is what happened in the, uh, the trailing 12 months ended Q2 of 2024. But this one's a forecast for $3.95. So I'm expecting a very similar... Uh, trailing 12 months at the end of next quarter, as we just saw at the end of this quarter. Why am I reading you different numbers than you see at the bottom of the page? Well, because these are talking about what happens over the next four quarters. So this one's telling you, hey, what happens over Q1, Q2, Q3, and Q4 of 2024? That's my full year forecast for 2024 earnings, $2.35. That's a lot less than it was a couple of years ago because Tesla's been charging a lot less at the top line uh, than they used to charge. Uh, so is this the end of the world? No, it's not. $2.35 is fine. Uh, Tesla is between growth waves, they say in their earnings letters. So uh, we should expect earnings improvement to happen subsequently. So as we move into 2025, these earnings ought to be getting better with recovery in the auto business, uh, allowing Tesla to charge more for vehicles and Tesla selling more Cybertrucks as that model ramps up production in Austin to supply the global market for Cybertrucks. Uh, and that's mostly what's going on here. I don't have it up in the stratosphere with $15 <laughs> worth of earnings over a, a tr uh, next 12 months basis as I had uh, in some prior forecasts when I didn't expect Tesla to do as much price cutting and promotional activity as they've been doing stuff like the 0% uh, financing offers, etc. What's this next one? It's exactly the same chart, except it's on a logarithmic scale instead of a regular standard linear scale. So what's that mean? Well, over here at the side, you can see what's happening. You got 25 cents worth of earnings at this line where Tesla was back in 2019 Q1. Uh, that was the next 12 months. So the full year 2019, or I guess full year 2019 was 48 cents. No, uh, I confuse myself, even myself with these charts. No, next 12 months, this would be Q2 through. So this 74 cents is telling you what happened in 2020. And this 226 is telling you what happened in 2021, uh, etc. So a lot of good growth here. 50 cents, a dollar, two dollars, four dollars, eight dollars. Every line it doubles from what it was previously. So this straight line is telling you that there was exponential growth over this period and that we've seen some pairing back since then and this 235 that is a low friends my forecast for the full year 2024 uh that's what i'm expecting we'll see what we get uh but the first two quarters haven't been outstanding uh and some of what we got in q4 of 2023 was a one-time item so it would be worse than this by a dollar 70 if not for that 5.93 billion dollars worth of benefit Tesla got 
from prior year's losses they finally took in Q3 of 2024 after years of me expecting them to say that they were going to take that favorability. All right, so there's those two charts. Here's one that's Tesla average FSD revenue at time of purchase per delivery in thousands. Uh, the, uh, the FSD sales probably haven't been all that hot recently. Q4 and Q1, I had at lower levels than I had at many of the previous quarters. This is only my guess. Tesla does not share this information at this level of detail with us. But I do my forecasting at an extremely detailed level, so I need to know, hey, how much FSD do I think Tesla was able to sell to people at the time they took delivery of their Tesla? Uh, not the subscription to FSD, uh, which got a lot cheaper recently, uh, and not an after-the-fact sale to somebody who did it as a software upgrade quarters or years after taking delivery of their Tesla. So I think as FSD gets better, more and more people will buy it. And that's my assumption for growing that to, you know, $2,000 per uh, delivery. But again, nowhere near the expectations that I had previously had for how much FSD Tesla would be selling in 2025. I left this scale where it was so you can see how much lower my current forecast expectations are from where they had been in the past. This is the primary driver of earnings being lower now than where I had forecast them in the past is I just don't think Tesla is selling much FSD to people. And I had hoped that by now FSD would be a lot better and a lot more people would be buying it when they take delivery of a new Tesla. What do we have here? This is Tesla's operating cash flow, uh, capital spending, and free cash flow combined. So uh, the free cash flow piece of the stack is the white bars, and the capital spending part of operating cash flow is the gray bars. I confused the, uh, finan the professional financial analyst hiding behind the fake name Brad Munkin uh, with this presentation. He didn't get it. Well, what is the formula for free cash flow? The formula for free cash flow is operating cash flows less capital spending. So how much money is left over from your operating cash flows after you've paid for all the capital that you purchased, all the capital assets that you put into service? this quarter. That's what free cash flow is, and that's why you can stack them one on top of the other and call the height of the combined bar operating cash flow, because it is. So you've got all three things shown on this chart at the same time. And Tesla has been over $10 billion worth of tra trailing 12 month operating cash flows every quarter since 2021. That's pretty great. Uh, so no, it's not at the same uh, level it once hit. So the trailing 12 months ended Q3 of 2022 was pretty great. Over $15 billion worth of operating cash flows then. But look how much bigger these gray bars are getting lately, right? Tesla is investing a ton of money in capital that they weren't buying in years past. So all those NVIDIA H100 chips going into the Austin Gigafactory, where Tesla's putting their supercomputer training cluster for AI and for FSD, right? Uh, that's some of what you see in these big gray bars here that are a lot larger than the ones that we saw. Uh, certainly years ago, uh, Tesla was very capital efficient here in 2019 and 2020. Uh, and then they've been investing a lot more in capital since. And uh, this operating cash flow is still looking pretty healthy. All right, let's talk about Stevenson Indicator. Every now and then somebody will ask me for a Stevenson Indicator update. So here you go. Here's your update. What is Stevenson Indicator? It's just the price Tesla was trading at on March 18th of 2020 plus $1.69 every three trading days. 
it used to be $1.69 every day, but then Tesla did a three-for-one stock split, so that made the explanation change to $1.69 every three trading days on a per share basis because everybody got two free shares to go with their one share uh, when that three for one stock split happened in August of 2022. So right around here is when that second stock split happened. So you can see for a few years there, this was a support line for Tesla. Anytime they fell below it by even a pixel, they would uh, shoot right back up over it. And that's when Stevenson Indicator was a thing. Then the bear market began on January the 3rd of 2022. That's right here. And uh, since then, the stock price has not been doing as well. So these were the all-time highs back here in November. Early November of 2021, Tesla hit its all-time highs so far. Uh, and then the yeah, bear market began at the start of 2022. The three-year low came in on January the 3rd of 2023. Uh, remarkably, it was exactly one year later uh, after this peak to this trough when the bear market began to the bottom. And then this year in mid-April, right before Tesla released earnings, Tesla went back to another local low uh, right here. And since then, it's been a lot higher. So I've got something going wrong with my date formats right here, but uh, this is the current day. You're up to date. That's where Tesla is relative to Stevenson Indicator. So Stevenson Indicator is uh, $625-ish, looks like to me. Will Tesla ever trade above Stevenson Indicator again? I don't know. It might. Uh, if you think Tesla is going to be a five- or $10 trillion company one day, you believe Tesla will trade above Stevenson Indicator again because this rate of increase uh, is going to take a long time to get to 5 or $6 trillion. Uh, that'll be a while from now. Okay, uh, what's this one do? I'll save it for the next video. So uh, that's the end of this video. I'll check back in with Loki, who is still curled up with his face buried in bed. I'll remind you to like the video if you liked the video using the uh, thumbs up if you're on YouTube or the heart if you're on X. And uh, that'll let the algorithm recommend this video to other people like you who might also like this video. And thank you to everybody who supports me, especially my executive producers, Kathy Kitchler and Rebellionaire.com. And I'll see you in the next one.